Is there any country in the world where the president can expel all foreign gold mining companies exploiting the country's gold? Well, until now, there was not. However, Captain Ibrahim Trahare of Burkina Faso has made history by taking such a revolutionary step. It took him some time before making this move, but he has created a circle of the most powerful people on his side. Captain Ibrahim Trahare has suspended all foreign mining licenses, including those held by Russian companies. So what led to this decision? It appears that he discovered covert activities being carried out by foreign companies in Burkina Faso. This compelled him to cancel their licenses. The question now is, what does he plan to do with the thousands of tons of gold that will remain within Burkina Faso? Upon assuming power, Captain Ibrahim Trahare was astonished that Burkina Faso, despite having significant gold reserves, remained one of the world's poorest nations. He realized that France, Burkina Faso's former colonial power, played a role in obstructing the development of an independent gold mining industry in the country. France imposed unfair trade agreements on Burkina Faso during both the colonial period and the post-independence era, ensuring that France disproportionately benefited from Burkina Faso's gold resources. Captain Ibrahim Traharay, while serving in the military, closely observed France's actions and discovered that French companies received special privileges in accessing mining concessions. Additionally, the pricing arrangements for Burkina Faso's gold exports were unfavorable. Instead of supporting the development of a local gold mining industry, France encouraged reliance on foreign expertise and technology, preventing the transfer of knowledge and skills to Burkina Faso citizens. This hindered the country's ability to develop its own expertise in gold mining, leading to dependence on foreign actors. Captain Ibrahim Trahore recognized France's detrimental policies in the Sahel region and made it his mission to free Burkina Faso from this trap. However, he understood that France held excessive political influence over Burkina Faso's government in the past, ensuring that policies favored French interests in the mining sector. This involved lobbying against policies that promoted local control over gold resources and using the government to grant favorable terms to French companies. To break Burkina Faso free from this systemic trap, Ibrahim Trahare decided to consolidate his powers and address the issue of the CFA franc, the common currency used by several West African countries. The CFA franc had been siphoning off Burkina Faso's wealth from the gold industry. The fixed exchange rate of the CFA franc to the euro was artificially high, diminishing Burkina Faso's export competitiveness. This discouraged investment and limited potential revenue from gold exports. Essentially, France could import a significant amount of Burkina Faso's gold by artificially strengthening the CFA franc and then devaluing it after the purchase. This way, France paid less than the original price for the gold. It became evident that France's involvement in Burkina Faso's gold mining industry primarily aimed to exploit the country's resources for its own benefit with little regard for Burkina Faso's development. Now, over a year since Captain Ibrahim Trahore assumed power, he decided to unveil his plans in a bold and far-reaching move that resonated not only across Africa but beyond. Burkina Faso's leader, Captain Ibrahim Trahore, made a powerful declaration to expel all foreign mining companies operating within the country. This bold action aimed to regain control of Burkina Faso's abundant gold resources and had a direct impact on industry giants like Nord Gold, Endeavor Mining, Fortuna Silver Mines, B2 Gold, and Hummingbird Resources. The decision sent shockwaves through Western corporations accustomed to exploiting Africa's wealth. Captain Ibrahim Trohere's moves went beyond defiance against France, with whom Burkina Faso has a complex history. It was a strategic maneuver to ensure that the nation's gold wealth benefits its people rather than foreign corporations. This sentiment resonates with the frustrations of many African leaders who witnessed the exploitation of their natural resources by Western companies, leading to poverty and desperation. 
However, Captain Ibrahim Traoré didn't stop at the expulsions. He implemented significant reforms to mining regulations, including increasing royalty rates during periods of elevated gold prices. This aimed to secure a more equitable share of wealth for the people of Burkina Faso, which became crucial after mine closures due to security concerns following recent coups. The expulsion of Russian mining giant Nord Gold, once considered a strategic ally, raised questions of favoritism towards other foreign players. Allegations of political connections surfaced, but the government vehemently denied them, stating that Nord Gold's permit was granted based on merit, not political affiliations. Adding complexity to the situation were rumors of Burkina Faso engaging mercenaries from Russia's Wagner Group. While the government denied using mining profits to pay these mercenaries, the lack of transparency fueled speculation and international scrutiny. This saga highlights the complex and often exploitative relationship between Western corporations and Africa. For decades, Western companies have profited significantly from Africa's resources, leaving many nations trapped in cycles of poverty and dependence. Captain Ibrahim Trohore actions represent a growing movement among African leaders demanding a fairer share of their own wealth and challenging the narrative that African nations are merely sources of cheap resources. Beyond economic implications, Captain Ibrahim Traoré's decision symbolizes a fight for sovereignty. He challenges the Western narrative that portrays African nations as sources of cheap resources and asserts their right to self-determination. His bold move may inspire other African countries to follow suit and assert control over their destinies. Ibrahim Traoré's actions have ushered in a new era for Burkina Faso. It will be a challenging journey, but his unwavering dedication to resource nationalism and national sovereignty has ignited hope throughout Africa. This story goes beyond gold. It's about a nation reclaiming its dignity and taking charge of its own future. While the final chapter is yet to be written, one thing is clear. Captain Trahare has issued a challenge, confronting exploitative practices from the West and inspiring a new generation of African leaders to demand their fair share of the continent's wealth. The world is watching, and the outcome could have significant implications for Africa and the global order. So what's next for Ibrahim Trahare after expelling foreign gold mining companies? In the heart of West Africa, Burkina Faso is shaping a new narrative in its quest for resource sovereignty. Under Captain Ibrahim Trohore's determined leadership, the nation confronts the challenge head-on, reclaiming authority over its vast gold reserves and challenging the historical dominance of foreign corporations. While companies like the UK-based Baru M face production setbacks due to security concerns, Burkina Faso remains steadfast in its pursuit of self-sufficiency. The establishment of a new gold refinery marks the beginning of a bold era. Burkina Faso aims to realize the full value of its mineral wealth and attract investors committed to ethical and sustainable development. Previously, Burkina Faso had to export unrefined gold, which resulted in lower prices and distance from the refining process. However, with the construction of its own gold refinery, Burkina Faso's authorities will be present to calculate the fair share that should be given to the country. While some expected Ibrahim Trahare to spare the Russian mining company, he aims for a different approach. He doesn't want to intertwine Burkina Faso's relations with Russia by allowing Russian companies to mine in the country. These are two separate matters that should be kept distinct. The winds of change are sweeping across the continent, fueled by a deep desire for economic independence and social justice. The pro-self-reliance movement is gaining momentum, with Captain Trahore leading the charge, challenging exploitative practices from the West and setting a precedent for other nations to follow. It's important to note that Burkina Faso's struggle for gold sovereignty extends beyond its borders. This story represents a rising movement across the continent, where nations are reclaiming control of their resources and demanding a fair share. 
Captain Trahore's leadership serves as a beacon of hope for other countries to break free from foreign dependence and create a future where natural wealth empowers people and supports sustainable development. It goes beyond just gold. It's a nation's journey towards self-determination and people asserting their rightful place globally. While the battle is ongoing and the road ahead may be challenging, the spirit of self-reliance and Captain Trahore's unwavering determination offer a glimmer of hope. Nord Gold, despite recent developments, has played a significant role in Burkina Faso's mining sector. The company has a proven track record of successfully launching mines and efficiently managing projects. One notable example is the Bissa mine, where Nord Gold completed construction within the specified timeframe and budget achieving an impressive payback period. In 2016, Nordgold expanded the Bissa mine by constructing a heat leach facility at the Bouli deposit, a low-grade gold deposit near the Bissa operation. The construction of Bouli was completed on schedule and within budget, further contributing to Nordgold's operations in Burkina Faso. The Bissa and Bouli mines share infrastructure and facilities, providing over 1,300 jobs in modern open-pit operations. The processing plant utilizes a conventional carbon and leach circuit to produce gold on site. Nord Gold maintains a 90% interest in both mines, with the remaining 10% owned by the government of Burkina Faso. This partnership showcases the collaboration between the company and the government in sustaining job opportunities and driving economic growth. Overall, this story reflects the aspirations of nations across Africa to take control of their resources and shape their own destiny. It signifies a shift towards self-determination and economic empowerment, highlighting the importance of sustainable development in the pursuit of prosperity. Nord Gold has invested a significant amount, totaling $1.3 billion, in Burkina Faso since 2009. This sets the company apart from Western gold mining companies that often invest less in the region. Nord Gold's commitment to Burkina Faso goes beyond investment. They have implemented advanced solutions throughout the production value chain. These include the Delco Fleet Management System, ALS Fuel Management System, and Laboratory Information Management System. These investments leverage local expertise, benefit from a well-trained workforce, and achieve economies of scale through infrastructure sharing. The taxes and royalties paid by Nord Gold to Burkina Faso amount to approximately $60 million, making it one of the most profitable mining operations for the country. It is noteworthy that 95% of Nord Gold's employees are Burkina nationals, highlighting the company's integration with the local workforce. The government of Burkina Faso also holds a 10% stake in both mines, solidifying the partnership between Nord Gold and the nation. However, Captain Ibrahim Trahare discovered troubling revelations about foreign companies exploiting Burkina Faso. Startlingly, it was revealed that citizens, already grappling with poverty, were allegedly deprived of $16.5 million in gold mining royalties. This substantial sum, crucial for supporting public services, is claimed to have been forfeited due to a special low-tax agreement made with Nord Gold during the rule of the former dictator. This staggering amount far exceeds the meager $1 million allocated by the country for nationwide school supplies this year. Nord Gold, owned by Russian billionaire Alexei Mordashov, who has an estimated fortune of $19 billion, is alleged to be the beneficiary of this favorable tax deal. Unfortunately, this is not an isolated case. Concerns about the government's insufficient benefit from gold production prompted an increase in royalty rates in 2010. However, Nord Gold's mine was allegedly exempt from these new royalty rates due to a contentious agreement made 15 years prior. A contract from 1995 revealed that the previous owner, Canada's High River Gold, secured a deal fixing the royalty rate at 3% for the entire mine life during Blaise Compaoré's regime. Calculations based on Burkina Faso's Ministry of Mines gold production data suggest that Nord Gold saves $16.5 million, 
due to this low tax guarantee known as a fiscal stability clause. These agreements, initially introduced to attract foreign companies concerned about uncertain fiscal and political environments, have become controversial. They seemingly hinder any future changes to a country's legislation. Despite attempts by the Burkina Faso government to charge higher royalties, the situation remains unresolved. In 2011, Nord Gold's complaint reportedly resulted in the confirmation of a consistent 3% royalty rate. According to Nord Gold's own disclosures and annual reports, this rate led to a saving of $16.5 million, thanks to soaring gold prices exceeding $1,000 per ounce. This revelation shed light on the illicit practices of foreign gold mining companies in Burkina Faso, with Captain Ibrahim Traharay patiently waiting for their licenses to expire. Now, the time has come for license renewals, and Captain Ibrahim Traharay, wielding his absolute power, has chosen not to issue new licenses until agreements are negotiated. The previous licenses held by foreign companies had terms that kept taxes low, and instead of simply renewing them, Captain Ibrahim Trahare decided to cancel them. Although the tax percentage would have remained the same if renewed, Captain Ibrahim Trahare aimed to renegotiate the terms. While it was widely known that Captain Ibrahim Trahare would eventually expel Canadian, UK-based, and French companies, the decision to remove the Russian company came as a surprise. However, it's essential to understand that Ibrahim Trahare's move to cancel licenses and pursue new collaborations can be seen as a firm approach to treating all allies equally. President Captain Ibrahim Trahare's decision to suspend licenses of all foreign gold mining companies in Burkina Faso is based on the idea of restructuring agreements to maximize benefits for Burkina Faso itself, rather than exclusively favoring foreign companies. The underlying strategy is to initiate the renegotiation of new agreements that prioritize the interests and welfare of Burkina Faso, ensuring that the nation becomes the primary beneficiary of its gold resources. Through the cancellation of existing licenses, Captain Ibrahim Trahare seeks to create a fair and mutually beneficial playing field that empowers Burkina Faso to reap the rewards of its valuable gold resources. Ibrahim Trahare intends to discard previous arrangements that may not have been favorable for Burkina Faso in terms of economic gains and resource management. This decision sets the stage for negotiating new agreements that align better with the country's economic development goals and the well-being of its citizens. The aim is to level the playing field and redefine the terms of engagement with foreign companies involved in gold mining. The ultimate objective is for Burkina Faso to become the primary beneficiary of its gold wealth. This approach represents a departure from past practices, where foreign companies have disproportionately profited from extracting valuable resources. Ibrahim Trahare's strategy seeks to establish a precedent where Burkina Faso plays a central role in determining the terms of resource exploitation. The goal is to ensure that the economic benefits and revenues generated significantly contribute to the country's growth and development. Ibrahim Trahare recognizes that the current agreements with foreign mining companies are opaque and favor those companies at the expense of Burkina Faso. By nullifying the licenses and initiating renegotiations, Burkina Faso has an opportunity to level the playing field and secure a more equitable share of the wealth. This action also promotes transparency, ensuring that all aspects of the agreements are open to public scrutiny and free from corruption. It's important to note that Ibrahim Trahare is the decision-maker in Burkina Faso. He acknowledges the history of foreign entities exploiting the country's resources for their own gain. His decision signifies a significant step towards asserting the country's sovereignty over its natural wealth. By regaining control of the gold mining industry, Burkina Faso can ensure that its resources are utilized for the development and prosperity of its own people, rather than for the enrichment of foreign corporations. The renegotiation process presents a unique opportunity to secure a larger share of the gold profits for Burkina Faso, ensuring that its resources contribute more substantially to the country's welfare. 
This bold move by Burkina Faso has the potential to bring in increased revenue that can be directed towards crucial areas such as education, healthcare, infrastructure development, and poverty alleviation. By investing in its people and infrastructure, Burkina Faso aims to break free from the cycle of dependence on foreign aid and chart its course towards sustainable development. However, Captain Ibrahim Trohare's actions have had a ripple effect across Africa, inspiring other resource-rich nations to re-evaluate their agreements with foreign mining companies. Burkina Faso's courageous step serves as a powerful example of how African nations can regain control over their natural resources and negotiate fairer deals that benefit their populations. This shift in power dynamics could have far-reaching implications for the entire continent, leading to a more equitable distribution of wealth and resources. Historically, excessive reliance on foreign companies for resource exploitation has trapped many African nations in economic dependence, hindering sustainable development and limiting economic diversification. By renegotiating mining agreements, Burkina Faso aims to reduce its dependence on foreign entities, generate its own revenue, and build a more self-sufficient and resilient economy. Captain Ibrahim Trahore acknowledges the lasting impact of colonialism and exploitation which still shapes the relationships between African nations and foreign corporations. By voiding existing licenses, Burkina Faso takes the first step in rectifying historical injustices and ensuring its rightful share of profits from its own resources. This action reflects a commitment to building a future grounded in equity and mutual respect. Ibrahim Trahare's vision for Burkina Faso extends beyond securing a larger share of gold profits. He aspires to construct a more equitable future for all citizens, where the benefits of the nation's resources are distributed fairly, contributing to the overall well-being of the population. By directing increased revenue into social programs, education, and infrastructure development, Burkina Faso can create opportunities for everyone and ensure a brighter future for future generations. As Ibrahim Trahore has postponed elections, it becomes evident that he intends to do more than just compensate for historic exploitation. He aims to distance Burkina Faso from the resource curse, a paradoxical situation where countries rich in natural resources often suffer from poverty and economic stagnation due to mismanagement and exploitation. Travaray's decision to renegotiate mining agreements demonstrates a commitment to transparency, accountability, and responsible resource management. Burkina Faso can utilize its gold wealth for sustainable development, breaking free from the shackles of the resource curse. Ibrahim Trahare's ultimate objective is to ensure that Burkina Faso becomes the first among equals when it comes to its own resources. This vision challenges traditional power dynamics between resource-rich nations and foreign corporations. Trahare prioritizes the needs and interests of Burkina Faso and its citizens, ensuring that the country primarily benefits from its natural wealth. Now, let us know your thoughts. Do you believe Captain Ibrahim Trahare made the right decision by cancelling the licenses of all foreign companies? Or should he have exempted the Russian gold mining company? Share your thoughts on what would happen if all African leaders followed suit and kept precious metals in their own countries.